Fiona Bell, I'm a GP, and I know it's after lunch, after a long day, it's been amazing this morning, but I need your attention for another 90 minutes, please. Um, and so I, norm I work in youth health, and I talk, when I work in youth health and I teach youth health, sexuality is part of it. But this is my first time that I've talked just about sexuality, so bear with me. Um, yeah. So I, I'm the lead GP for Youth Health Services Alliance, so in the Auckland Health District, uh, the DHB and the primary health organisations all agreed that youth health wasn't being done very well and could be done better and that's where we've been moving. Ah. Um, I found this when you Google, um, looking for competencies in sexuality and the, this is kind of like a framework um, that I'm going to try and address through uh, the different things I present and cases. Um, so some of the competencies, being able to sensitively and effectively elicit the relevant information, so how to obtain the complete history using open-ended language free of assumptions, how to respond when we inadvertently make an assumption or cause offence, we've all done it, we'll probably do it a few more times, how to make the practice environment more welcoming and safe, um, and then I won't put much time into that, but because when we do need to perform an, a complete and accurate physical examination, it's the explanation <laughs> that we give as to the reasons for considering the examination, the mechanics, the words we use for their body parts, um, and then just performing that tailored examination with chaperone off uh, appropriate etiquette and technique. Um, and so, again from youth space, um, the, my mother always worried about me being a wallflower. <laughs> I didn't even know what that meant until I grew up later. Um, and this is a great movie if you want an inside view of what it's like being a young person. Um, some ground rules, we probably, you know, I understand the people who are here today are actually don't need ground rules reminding. Um, but it is that thing that when we're discussing things that it's here, it's for our learning, it's for our safety, um, and we keep each other safe. Um, the perspective I bring is that I am first generation New Zealand born Samoan to Valu Scottish. My grandfather was a minister of the church, he was a missionary. Um, from Tuvalu into Samoa, and so I have grown up in New Zealand with a very strong Christian background. And here I am talking about sex. <laughs> but that comes from, actually, my, my grandparents, their way of teaching the family and serving was to serve with love, and that is what I was brought up was, yes, you want to do health, so I go to serve with love. And English is limiting, because we just say aloha, and aloha means yes, we get it, and aroha means the same thing. Whereas love, people think, oh, does that mean sex? And it's like, nah, don't mean that kind of love. So agape and compassion are the closest I can understand in English to mean what I'm trying to say. I am still learning, I'm not an expert. I'm not a sexual health physician. I'm a GP. Um, but in this room, we've got a lot of richness here, so please share your expertise. Um, I, I do do um, death by PowerPoint, so there are nearly 90 slides. <laughs> yeah, I do like to go fast. Um, and so if there are some kind of cases that you want to discuss or present or something, um, can we just hold those, write it down, and we'll hold them and discuss them in detail towards the end. Um, I'm going to take you through ref just reflecting on sexuality, I and mean, I've got some cases as well. Some uh, to protect the identity of the individuals, they're kind of merged people, as well as stuff from the American uh, competencies paper. So sexuality, just skin, exposure, human touch. This is this thing about culture and language, how it frames perspectives on sexuality. People breastfeeding in public, is it sexually provocative or is it just feeding a baby? Um, in New York, there's a civil rights law which permits a mother to breastfeed her child in any public or private location, irrespective of whether she shows a nipple. Why do you even need a law? <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, so that's their culture and why they need a law. Okay, so short shorts. I don't know, is it clothing or is it sexually provocative? A 14 year old girl will just say, so what, I got thighs. Get over it. 
and then a massage. Oh, go back. And then massage. Is it nurturing or is it sexual? So traditional, med traditional health practice by Māori, Samoan and other pra um, co traditional cultures, massage is part of nurturing, sh uh, reinvigorating, um, showing love to the person who needs more care. And it's not sexual, <laughs> it's just looking after and that's what everybody does. So <coughs> yeah, different, different cultures. Dichotomous words aren't inclusive and they're not helpful. And the words, the term sexually active, young people say, well, what does that even mean? On, off? Okay, so just a reminder with young people developing sexual attraction to you know, the different stages towards coupling. And of course, it doesn't always go in a nice long line, even for adults, it's kind of go, come, go, back, forth, stop here. There's a lot of options and now with apps and, um, and these are apparently the most commonly used ones in New Zealand. I had to Google this stuff. Um, and singles and we love dates are quite popular with um, same-sex attracted females. Um, Tinder's quite popular with a lot of people. Um, and then there's Grinder, which you may have heard of as well. Um, so this is Youth 2000 series, so nationally representative uh, series has of surveys of young people that Jeannie um, alluded to. And so over the years, this is number of secondary school students who have ever had sex in orange over the years, always used a condom to prevent STIs in red, stayed about the same, always using contraception to prevent pregnancy. Not much change over that amount of time, and unfortunately, we haven't got another oh, series to be able to say what's it changing like yet. But anyway, so far we haven't done enough. So the percentage of students who've actually had sex. So this, this is normal. This is what humans are like. Ever had sex? You start young, had anybody? As you get older, yes. Ever had sex might increase, not be a hundred percent ever. But currently sexually active, then the gap just kind of changes like that. That's that's normal. So sexuality is diverse, and diversity is normal. Um, so 4% of New Zealand secondary students are attracted to the same, or more than one sex. Uh, there is no difference across gender, socioeconomic um, environment, or geography. Māori, Pacific, Asian people appear to be more confident as young people to identify as non-heterosexual. Fluidity. Um, so like we've heard about gender identity and gender fluidity, it's similar with sexuality. And so if there's any fluidity of the sexuality attraction to a particular group of people, and it's a, the fluidity is happening in early, early adolescence, it tends to reduce as they get older. Has anybody seen this? Oh, you've just got to watch it, The Fundamentals of Caring. Got to. Okay, um, so one of the things that we're all trying to teach now is making sure young people understand consent, and that needs to be enthusiastic consent every step of the way. Yeah. Um, and so sexual urge is something that is normal, often not talked about. It emerges after onset of puberty, not immediately. I would put a ballpark figure roughly about two and a half to three years. But that's an average, obviously. Um, and of course, there's all the different ways of touching each other. The onset of sexualised encounters, and this is what everybody worries about. And it's interesting that femini you know, the feminine thinking and actually how much control society has over people's sexuality. Parents always prefer that their kids debut as late as possible because they want their kids to have a master's at 30 years of age before they have sex and get <laughs> after they got married. It's like, what? Um, <laughs> so earlier urge tends to follow earlier onset of puberty. Um, also, earlier onset, more likely if you've been socialised sexually. Um, there's data of young children and 
being growing up in environments where there's lots of parties and sexualized behavior and music videos puts them in a frame of mind kind of a bit more oh that's normal and expected of me um, so obviously substance induced disinhibition sexualized acting out um, even for people who've been abused sexually in the past for some people it's trying to reclaim their sexual control and create some memories of their own. Um, and it's what everybody dreams of. <laughs> um, but internationally, it's actually found that, regardless of your culture, all parents underestimate when their children first debut. Uh, so some cultures are much more inclusive of all sexuality and takatapui is this resource I've put there on your desks. Please take one each if you've never seen one before and please read it. This is like a good resource for our country. Um, so traditionally means intimate companion of the same sex, embraces all Māori who identify with diverse genders and sexualities, including whakawahine, tangata, iratane, lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, intersex and queer. Whaa Samo, which is traditional Samoan culture, and I won't go through everything because I don't know the others, but Whaa Whinge also is a group of people that in the Western society would be group, divided up into these little groups, effeminate men, transgender males to females, male homosexuals. Um, from this book in particular, there were some things that I just thought. On page 10, next to the picture of Jennifer, they, meaning us, they ask, was I born male? And I say, no, I was born female. The equipment might be wrong. My grandmother knew it. My grandmother knew it so I know what I am. On the next page, page 11 in bright red, the wairua and Māori of Tukatapui are trampled on when their identity is reduced to body parts. Yeah, so it's different thinking please. Okay. Um, so this is a 15 year old, this is where one of my offices um, this is a 15 year old female who at the end of our first consult just for good old general practice stuff and I, as she was about to head out the door I said are you seeing anyone do you need condoms and she goes oh at least that's one thing mum's thrilled about what do you mean mum's stoked because I got a girlfriend and I won't get pregnant <laughs> <laughs> that's cool isn't that cool <laughs> so in New Zealand Western culture which in New Zealand it's based on that colonial interpretation of Christian values, some of it's less inclusive. So lesbian, gay and bisexual people are much more likely to leave um, the faith of their upbringing than heterosexuals. And they do this to manage the dissonance between their personal identity and religious custom and the people that they go to church with. Um, and I got this from the, it's the Lavender Island study, it was done back, published back in 2007. They reported still hurting from the rejection by their religion or their congregation of upbringing, and more so if they were raised Christian. And so this is one of the things about Whaasamoa, is traditional Whaasamoa is inclusive of Whawhawhinge, but Christian Samoan society struggles with homosexuality, it's the sex thing. Okay. And so though this doesn't specify about sexuality, this is that same thing. No one's born hating, but um, if you can learn to hate, then you can learn to love again. Um, and so even South Africa legalised marriage before Aotearoa. We think we're ahead of the game, but we're not. <laughs> and we can still learn from other people and cultures. Um, some cultures are becoming much more inclusive. The St Matthews in the city which is just down next to City Mission in, in Hobson Street in Auckland. Um, and they welcome two of every kind. And there are several churches in Auckland CBD um, that are just open to everybody and all families. Um, so this is the Western language of diversity. And I understand why it is that people need it. And I, th I think a lot of families benefit from learning the different words. This is the Rainbow Youth I'm Local booklet that um, helps explain the, the spectrum of genders and the spectrum of sexualities. 
um, David Bowie, you know, people can remember that song about changes. And it's like, my gosh, there's a verse here. These children you spit on as they try to change the world are immune to your consultations. They're quite aware of what they're going through. Don't tell them to grow up and out of it, which may be not what we're saying, but what their families are saying. Um, where's your shame? That's directed at the adults. You've left us up to our necks in it. So being not in a heterosexual, in a heterosexually dominated world. Um, so we've heard about how when people are fleeing danger and how they go into a survival mode um, and then a honeymoon period before the settling in and realisation and then it just swamps them. And so people struggling when they're in a heterosexually dominated world go through similar things. The denial of one's true identity and behaviours is, is survival. Um, it's common prior to full disclosure. In New Zealand, uh, the lesbian, gay, bisexual people who were surveyed described defecting in place from their religion rather than disclose to their parents. So they would attend church or a temple or whatever um, just so that they go through the motions of being part of the family. Um, for many non-heterosexual people, living a double life or at an emotional and geographical distance from family was or is still lifelong. And you'll know lots of people who do this, um, both in your working life as what may be your private life. And so what do parents wish for their children? Everybody wants, everybody's so excited and they want them to be healthy, happy, good at something, a good citizen, hopefully one day economically independent or contributing to the family. And everybody wants their child to find love. Maybe they want them to have children. What factors contribute to severe emotional distress when one of those things goes wrong? What times of the year are potentially most distressing? Family time. <laughs> So, 24-year-old single female teacher, only child, family keep asking if she has a boyfriend. You know, so she's an alcohol binger, depressed, suicidal, tiring of going to the wine bars and the dating apps, may never have children, feels like a failure. Um, Pet Shop Boys recorded a song with Kylie Minogue um, doing the daughter verse here. And so it's, you're in denial, the daughter says to her dad, and that is fine, and you're not admitting you should be quitting all these queens and fairies and muscle marys, the rough trade boyfriend, who in his pathetic own way denies he's gay. Why can't you see this is a fantasy world? Father thinks I'm going mad. Look at me, I'm lonely, she says. Look at me, I'm sad, he says. I'm not denying I could be trying a little harder to deal with some of the stuff. <sighs> My life is absurd. I'm living it upside down, he admits, like a vampire. A dad with a girl who knows he's gay. And of course, she's still going to love him. She just wants to know, will he love her back? Um, and I just wanted, I didn't know where to put the slide. So an intimate partner violence, violence happens in all kinds of relationships. But added to the, all the bits we know, in same-sex relationships, power and control can also be exerted by threatening to out somebody to their family, their friends and their work colleagues before they are ready. Um, and so I'll just, I'll touch on some of the health issues and I think you all know this. Um, men have sex with men and females have sex with females compared with heterosexuals. Have more hypertension, diabetes, psychological distress, substance abuse. Um, men have sex with men um, who don't use condoms, have more STIs and STI related cancers, um, as well as the bisexual men and females who have sex with females have fewer STI related problems but it is possible. Um, in New Zealand we've got a, a suicide problem and um, it's not just young people, it's uh, older people as well and these are the factors for a depressive episode and we've heard about people who are diverse genders and people of, who are refugee and who are migrants, uh, people of ethnic minorities who feel victimised. Um, and when people have a sexuality that is not being accepted or they're being victimised because of it, it's just added stuff. Um, and then in trying to cope with that themselves, they may develop an alcohol substance problem. Um, 
an attempt. These factors kind of make an attempt more likely. And being excluded for who you are, if you add a disability to that, it makes it higher. And then not being able to find employment, being excluded from school, and being kind of getting racial, racial discrimination as well. It's like, it just kind of all adds up. And the fact that we have as many people who have lived through all this crap and are still here as survivors is incredible. Um, and so we should be learning from them and their resiliencies uh, so that we can find more people. Um, I'm also a Boy George fan. <laughs> uh, very few people can truly divorce themselves from what they feel emotionally and sexually. There's this illusion that homosexuals have sex and heterosexuals fall in love. That's completely untrue. Everybody wants to be loved. So Boy George's parents knew he, there was something different about him and that he was attracted to males. But he, ca he came out to them when he was 16. And he has thrived. Okay, we all remember Freddie Mercury and Queen, and I th don't think you need to hear somebody to love again, yeah? But go play it at home. Um, each morning I get up, I die a little. As I've spent all my years in believing in you, but I just can't get no relief. Can anybody find me somebody to love? When you're heterosexual, half the world could potentially be a partner. <laughs> when you're not, trying to find somebody to love gets a lot harder. Um, did anybody see this in the paper? I can't remember whether I saw it in the Herald or BBC website when I had breakfast. So uh, it's not his real name, he's a Chinese artist and gay farmer, of course married to a woman to fit into his family's expectations. So if you came out of the closet, your family would scold you. Scold you is the polite word for getting family violence on you. Uh, and you wouldn't be able to live there anymore, i.e. ostracised from the community. Even though I really wanted to be with the man I loved, I was afraid to. I thought I had a sickness. I felt very, very painful, but also happy. So he, he expressed um, himself through his artwork and in this next piece the torment of his love for this man he's sewing up his penis just the anguish to be able to express it this fast like that must really be hurting inside um, and we've had lots, had lots of patients like this when you have homophobic parents and you're secretly um, attracted to a person of the same gender they're never coming out as far as they're concerned. Um, and so there's a lot of alcohol and substance use problems. Um, and men who have sex with men, uh, I mean, every, all people, all sexuality use all sorts of drugs, but men who have sex with men seem to be using a lot more of these ones down here as well. It's when they mix lots of things that that's when they turn up in ED. Um, and so I think this is a song everybody remembers a kind of like supersonic man. It's really hard and fast, kind of like you can, you can hear the kind of the, the anxiety and kind of like the high people get on of don't stop me now, I'm going to have a really good time. And sometimes we have patients turn up and they're kind of in the state now with their sexuality when they might go in and out. Um, but, <laughs> you know, they're travelling at the speed of light and they're gonna make a supersonic man out of their partner or somebody that they've just met. They're having a good time. I'm having a ball. I'm a rocket ship on my way to Mars. I mean, it sounds manic. <laughs> on a collision course, n n absolutely knows on, they're on a collision course that life is going to turn, you know, flip upside down. But I'm a satellite, I'm out of control. I'm a sex machine ready to reload. And Freddie was known to be um, bisexual, and so there's a, another verse, same thing, but I'm gonna make a supersonic woman out of you. And so th these are not just celebrities, but these are artists who've managed to express themselves, and the people who walk through our clinics feel like this too. <coughs> uh, factors associated with sex without condoms, uh, because I did my masters on the sexual health knowledge of young people in South Auckland, who are mostly Pacific Island and Māori. So I went into the literature back then looking at uh, where Pacific Island people might have had their thoughts asked of. 
And some of the common themes there related to unprotected sex were dissonance between family identity and sexual identity, a need to express unconditional love intimately, i.e. without a condom. There's a lot of feeling of shame, lacking self-acceptance, and when discriminated against, blame themselves rather than the person who was discriminating them. These are very similar to themes to the, the Western celebrities and artists 